Joining me now is president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, Dr. John Lott. Dr. Lott, welcome back to the Salcedo Show. You know, Democrats already using this this tragedy as an excuse to push their anti-Second Amendment agenda. But it actually makes the counter argument, doesn't it? As Democrats promote their crime wave with their policies, we should resist their efforts to leave us, we the people, defenseless, no? I couldn't agree more. Look, uh, anybody who's read my academic work knows that I think police are extremely important in stopping crime. But when you come to things like mass public shootings, they have a very difficult task there. The people who go and engage them have a huge strategic advantage because they can choose the time and the place to go and attack. If they see one police officer there, they can either move on to another target, wait for the officer to leave, or if they are going to attack, since in a place like New York City on the subways, the only person that would be armed would be the uh, uniformed police officer, they would attack him first before they go after attacking other people. The thing that you gain by having citizens with permanently concealed handguns is that it makes it riskier for these types of attacks to occur because the attacker there doesn't have the same strategic advantages. He doesn't know whether there's somebody nearby who's going to be able to stop him. In fact, it even makes the job safer for the police officer because what happens is is that uh, if he does start to attack the police officer, he reveals his position. And he has to worry that somebody behind him or to the side might be able to go and stop him. So, you know, it's it's interesting how quickly they call for gun control. You look at the mass shooting that occurred in Sacramento just very recently. Uh, Biden immediately started calling for universal background checks, which is kind of the go-to thing that they call for all the time. California has had these background checks on private transfers for years. Uh, the people that were engaged in the attack had long felony records. One, you know, just to emphasize your point about law enforcement uh, being allowed to do its job, uh, one of the attackers there had just recently been sentenced to 10 years in prison and had been released six yep. years early uh, for uh, for the crime that he had committed, a very serious felony. Exactly, my. Exactly my point. The Democrat socialists around this country, they release that they are pro criminal. They release criminals to come out and attack we the people and make our communities less safe. Then when we have the gall and temerity to want to defend ourselves, the Democrats say we must take people's guns away so they can't defend themselves. And we're also going to defund their police officers. The Biden administration trying to combat criminal gun violence by targeting we the law abiding. The White House bypassed Congress by imposing this unconstitutional rule banning ghost gun kits yesterday. Ghost guns is a, is a scary way of saying, folks, guns that are made at home. Meanwhile, Democrats continue their, their defund the police efforts, Dr. Lott. None of this makes sense, does it? Look, uh, just as a simple factual point, people need to understand that over 92 percent of violent crime has nothing to do with guns. We should be focusing on reducing violent crime as a whole, not just gun crime. But you reduce them all the same way, and that is you make it costly and risky for criminals to go and commit crimes. You increase arrest rates and conviction rates and prison sentence lengths. That's how you reduce any type of violent crime. You know, when Biden went to New York City uh, in February and gave his big violent crime speech, I really wish he had had, you know, a so-called sister soldier type moment. Uh, where he would have gone there and says, look, you guys cut the police budget by a billion dollars a year in New York City. You have district attorneys who are refusing to prosecute violent criminals. You've let loose over half the inmates that were in jails in the area. And you have bail reform where people who are facing very serious penalties are let out in either no or very low bail. Yeah, I, I give you an example on that last point. You, you know, in Wisconsin, where that SUV driver drove uh, his uh, car into a Christmas crowd, killing six people and wounding over 50, he was already facing an attempted murder charge with his vehicle against the mother of his child. He had was facing mm -hmm. other serious felonies. He was probably facing 25 or more years in prison. What are you going to do? Give somebody a second life sentence or a third life sentence? At what point does... It deterred. The whole point is when you already have somebody who's facing long prison sentences, right. letting them out on bail is crazy because there's really 
not much more of an additional penalty that you're going to be able to impose on. Dr. Lott, last question. Uh, 2019 Justice Department study found that 43 percent of criminals purchase their weapons on the black market. None of those criminals, because they're criminals, they didn't have the brains to make their own guns. So they didn't make their, they don't have the craftsmanship to make their own guns at home. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is set to drop Title 42 next month without a clear plan going forward to secure the border. Joe Biden has zero plans, zero plans. He, or, or I'm sorry, I should say Barack Hussein Obama has zero plans to address illegal guns that are drink, being trafficked right now across that southern border because that might resemble something called law enforcement. And Joe Biden and Democrats don't do law enforcement. So isn't it, doesn't it really tell us how hypocritical and how dangerous this Democrat administration is when they're out there targeting law-abiding citizens rather than targeting illegal activity, in particular illegal activity that leads to illicit guns coming across the southern border? Look. You know, the types of rules that they're putting forward are going to raise the price of guns. If my research convinces me of anything, the people who benefit the most from being able to have guns are poor minorities, particularly poor blacks who live in high crime urban areas. Police are extremely important, but the police know themselves that they virtually always arrive on the crime scene after the crimes occurred. And as you point out, and it's quite true. You know, they're not really going to be, these rules aren't going to stop the criminals from going and getting, getting guns. Look, you mentioned the right. black market. The major source of illegal guns for criminals are drug dealers. You know, just the drug dealers have to have guns to protect their valuable property. It's not like they can go to the police, the militaries, yeah. and do it. And if they can make money selling drugs or selling guns, they're going to be doing it. They have, they have the weapons anyway. And it's the bottom line is, is it just as difficult to stop criminals from buying guns as it is to stop them from buying illegal drugs. Dr. John Lott, thank you very much. Appreciate it.